Well, now, what, a, what an awful, awful thing to see. But we're here to learn, so we'll move on. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 364, and uh, it's the second week of February of 2024. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And really especially this week, because we're recording a little bit later than usual. So many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. We are not going to get into the 1999 WCW I watched today. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. There's plenty of other news. Mainly, Cody Rhodes is wrestling Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and The Rock appears to have turned heel and joined forces with Roman Reigns as part of the bloodline. Re- WWE had their WrestleMania kickoff event on Thursday night in Las Vegas. All the sports media in the world is there for the Super Bowl, and they book the T-Mobile Arena and they let fans in for free, and they let some media people in, <laughs> and they had they had a raucous, wonderful variety show that uh, a step it really raised a lot of questions about WrestleMania. And then after it ended, they answered one of them, sort of. <laughs> we know Roman Reigns is wrestling Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania, despite Cody on last Friday of SmackDown saying that he was not coming for Roman at WrestleMania. They've just decided to retcon that. It is no longer canon that Cody said he was going to step aside mm-hmm. for Dwayne. And uh, yeah, so they did this angle where Roman said Cody lost the right to choose. He who hesitates is lost. And so Roman was going to pick his opponent and he wanted to face The Rock at WrestleMania. And then The Rock came out and said, whether you like it or you don't like it, you have to accept it. This is the biggest main event of all time. And then Cody came out and said, this is BS. Said that Dwayne and Roman's grandfathers would be embarrassed by them. And uh, Rock slapped Cody. And then there was a pull apart. Also, Seth Rollins and Nick Aldis were there for some reason. Adam Pierce and Triple H were on stage for some reason. And then backstage, Triple H was doing an interview with Jackie Redman and The Rock walked by and they did some acting together where The Rock said that Triple H needs to fix this situation with Cody. It was, um, I don't know, what did you think of the uh, WrestleMania kickoff event and uh, what the hell is going on? Um, uh, I didn't enjoy most of the event. <laughs> uh, it was uh, a bunch of, it's so funny because we were, as we often do when these sorts of things are going on, we're sending messages to each other. And I'm like, I hate this. This is so weird and stilted. And they're just cutting these awkward promos. And it's like half a press event, half of pep rally for the world wrestling federation yes and it's just not and everybody's extra stilted and weird in everything they're saying and you were like well this is a this is a normie event this is this is where we spell everything out for the for the real press for wrestlemania and that does make sense but then to your point they didn't do that and in fact triple h had to go on twitter afterwards (laughs) to explain what the hell was happening and we still don't know exactly what's <laughs> happening. We It appears that Cody versus Roman Reigns is happening at WrestleMania. And it would appear that they set up a tag match between Roman Reigns and The Rock versus Cody and Seth to happen at some date. <laughs> yeah. But we don't know when that would be. Um, if that's if that's the night one main event, if we're doing like G1 style, <laughs> we got a we got a tag the night before the the title match. Uh, you could do that. Maybe, maybe they did after all convince Dwayne to work that Australia show and it's going to happen at the chamber. Who knows? Um, nobody knows. So <laughs> I, I guess I would say what the hell was any of that for? Because you, if it was just a regular episode of SmackDown and you went off the air in confusion, I think it would be a lot more forgivable because Hey, it's twists and turns and you got, whatever six weeks until wrestlemania so you have some time to to weave some stories whether they're good or not whereas this as you said is supposed to be the event where we spell everything out in plain english for the press 
and they chose to not do that. <laughs> Indeed. And that's weird and dumb and a waste of everyone's time. The um before the the, the show went off the air with the Triple H and Dwayne Angle um backstage after the event had ended. Uh but prior to that, after uh Rock and Cody and Seth and Dwayne were on the stage doing their uh doing their skit, uh the panelists for this kickoff event, the broadcast <laughs> journalists covering it were Pat McAfee, Big E, CM Punk, and Michael by God Cole. And uh Immediately after uh, the wrestlers had were done speaking on the stage, uh, CM Punk was just shouting about how CM uh, about how Cody Rose needs to punch everyone in the face, yeah, and he's, how he's trying to get his ish in about <laughs> punching your bosses. Yes, and uh, was saying that uh, was trying to turn this into some kind of like uh, I don't know the Rock is an authority figure story, with uh, the Rock is on the board and uh, mm-hmm. Cody is. Cody is Austin and the rock is Vince and uh, in in the only story they know how to tell. And then uh, all the panelists were asking one another, um, what the hell just happened? What is the WrestleMania match? I don't know. Do you know? I don't know. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, Michael Cole tries to like very authoritative be like, it's Cody and Roman. We know that. And Punk is just like, do, do do we know that? And then you clearly see all of the confidence drained from Michael Cole's face <laughs> because he clearly doesn't know if that's what that, what's actually happening. And then yes, they cut to the uh, the Dwayne and Paul, uh, the lovely lovely little improv they did. <laughs> um, yeah, where they're supposed to act mad at each other, but neither one of them knew what to say, so they just kind of stood there. <laughs> Also, a lot of The Rock was using a lot of salty language and they were dropping the audio when he was cursing. Correct. So you could only make out about 50% of what he said. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just. I also is it. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say is it possible that uh, for me to say that I enjoyed the spectacle of all of this and also it was terrible? <laughs> Yeah, no, like I, I thought it was a good angle, but also <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I think it was in a bereft of the fictional story they are attempting to weave here, which is bad. <laughs> it was very entertaining. And the 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 behind the scenes minutia of how we have gotten to this point is very entertaining and very interesting. So yeah, I think that part of it's that part of it's fun. I thought <laughs> The Rock slapping Cody and Cody not getting to be physical with The Rock was funny. <laughs> sure. Um, Seth being out there like he's a part of this in any significant way was really funny. <laughs> After Roman called him the B champion and made fun of him for not getting pops uh, on yeah. SmackDown last Friday was very funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it was uh, it was a really interesting. Yes, it was it was a very funny fun sketch it doesn't answer the question when cody comes out screaming this is bs uh why cody uh voluntarily gave up his shot at roman last friday on smackdown yeah well hopefully they never they never they never should they have the balls to never show that again and just pretend it didn't happen (laughs) just retcon it yes that was an alternate wwe universe it's a new era triple h said it like four times during his opening monologue where he spoke about how WrestleMania was created out of thin air <laughs> by no one in particular. That's right. Cindy Lauper, Liberace, Muhammad Ali, and uh, Hulk Hogan, Paul Orndorff, or as Triple H says, Hulk Hogan. Uh, he's <laughs> never been he's been, never been able to say the name of the biggest star the company ever had. Uh, all those people were there for WrestleMania and uh, Roddy Piper, but. Uh, yeah, we don't know who the promoter was, I guess. Yeah, they were heading home. But this is a new WWE. I don't know. We'll see. Um, the reporting on what the hell the main event of WrestleMania is going to be over the last week has been fascinating, I would say. You left um, after SmackDown ended last week. You were left with the impression that it was going to be Cody versus Seth and Dwayne versus Roman. And then various outlets reported, well, this was part of the deal made back 
in early January when Dwayne uh, agreed to join the board and agreed to be paid $30 million and agreed to be given the ownership of his The Rock trademark. Mm -hmm. Uh, This was all the plan. This has been the plan for over a month. And uh, but then no one could explain why then uh, The Rock didn't win the Royal Rumble. Or why Cody Rhodes specifically won the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, no one can explain that. No one can explain that. And uh, The Rock, this is the We Want Cody uh, uh, social media thing that happened on after Cody announced on SmackDown that he was going to step aside. Mm-hmm. The, the fans did Daniel Bryan 10 years later and... We're going to try to will Cody to the main event and uh, turned on Dwayne. And then all of a sudden here today, a week, six days later, a week later, uh, the rock is a heel now and Cody's back in the main event. Any idea what happened here? I don't have any clue. So depending on who you ask, and again, you could ask the same person something on Friday. Certain reporters said one (laughs) thing on Friday. And we're saying a different thing by Monday. Yes. Um, So who's to say for sure. But my impression, looking from the outside in, I I think Dwayne was pretty noncommittal in those interviews after he joined the board about doing the match this year. I think the match was always in the cards for some time down the road. Yeah. But my impression is uh, they were going to do Cody and Roman and Punk versus Seth. And then Punk got hurt and they felt they needed more star power and to split the star power across the two nights. And then they realized very quickly that taking Cody away from Roman was not going to be received well. And so they pivoted pretty quickly to their credit. It's it's better that they pivot now as opposed to <laughs> being forced to do so in like three more weeks, I suppose. Like... Uh, like the Batista Orton thing, but, um, and then it seemed like there was a concerted effort (laughs) to express, as you said, that this was somehow all, all in the cards since Dwayne originally came back. And I just don't know how you could watch the look, the, how Dwayne spoke tonight and the look on his face throughout the whole segment and think, yep, this guy was planning on, (laughs) on being a heel when he came back on that show and did that horrific segment with Jinder Mahal. <laughs> this guy was always planning to be a heel. That um, seems a bit far-fetched. I can see why WWE would like it <laughs> to be said that that's the case. But I just don't see a scenario where Dwayne volunteered or pitched himself uh, coming back and immediately turning heel just doesn't seem like something that he would uh, do based on who I understand Dwayne to be as a person. He seems to exist to sell product, mm-hmm. whether it be Under Armour t-shirts and shoes or earbuds or energy drinks mm-hmm. or movies that he stars in. Mm-hmm. Dwayne is here to sell product. <laughs> and I don't know how it benefits him to be a heel selling product. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, yeah, to your point, I think this uh, this all came about later. But Did you like when he put up the periodic table of Samoans? <laughs> he gave a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> during the kickoff event where, I mean, the graphic is, is very impressive. Uh I just like you couldn't see it. <laughs> I, I I don't know. It wasn't the best forum to uh, display that uh, that graphic of uh, the Samoan wrestling dynasty family tree. Um, but uh, I did I did like it. I mean, we can do I it. Just, I just thought it was great because he he literally cues up Cody's music. He says that we are the only royal family in wrestling. And then they don't play Cody's music. He just walks out. (laughs) That was odd. (laughs) That was odd. (laughs) I don't know, man. 
Uh, PW Insider also reported something last week that uh, I reported first nine months ago. And then uh, also we talked about on this show last week that uh, Brian Gortz is coming in and uh, he's going to be there at least to handle Dwayne's creative for a while. And uh, TKO views him as a plan B if they ever have to jettison corporate officer number one, uh, Paul Levesque. <laughs> yeah. Another another scoop. Yep. You called it. <laughs> As always, one of us is always right. And uh, yeah, it's and hey, like we said, Bruce Bruce is out with his uh, his shoulder injury. So yeah. there's there's a seat at the table for Brian right away. And then, you know, just moves over one to the uh, to the top spot. If uh, if and when uh, Paul's card gets pulled. Along those lines, Vince McMahon is still under federal investigation. I think there's a I think there's a grand jury investigating Vince McMahon. And um, in addition to the civil lawsuit against him, Mm -hmm. he is still under federal investigation and came out this week that uh, Ari Emanuel uh, asked Vince to resign and uh, Mark Shapiro as well. And uh, he did pretty much right away. Um, And that uh, that decision was even above Nick Khan. And so the two head honchos at TKO, one of Vince out, and Vince acquiesced. Vince still owns like 10% of a stock, and so he can make some noise as far as if he were to dump all of that stock or something, it could uh, could hurt company value. But as far as decision-making power, doing another coup to get himself back in, uh, all of that appears to be off the table. But a federal investigation is still ongoing, and that's... Uh, It's uh, something we're gonna, we're something that uh, will be a story for a long time. Well, yeah, and it was not lost, I think, on anyone that WWE helping to uh, put a megaphone on the Cody story was perhaps a bit of an astroturfing campaign to get. WWE headlines into say the you know what you what what comes up when you Google <laughs> certain names or company names uh to stop having Vince McMahon's uh horrific alleged sex crimes be the first thing that uh, everyone is on everyone's lips when talking about the company. So um yeah, I think they would uh that that Hollywood Reporter article where they talked about that was uh there, there was a lot of lines about like they were shocked. <laughs> TKO was absolutely shocked by all of this, um, which I guess I would question. Did 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 you not <laughs> do not do your did Endeavor not do their due diligence when they were buying this company <laughs> or merging with this company or whatever? Because uh, turns out this was all uncovered in a in a in a <laughs> in an investigation like two years ago. Um. So that's that's an interesting claim that just n- nobody nobody knew. Everyone was shocked, especially especially the guys at the very top knew nothing about it. Um, but also, it doesn't matter because Vince wasn't doing anything, uh, even though Ari Emanuel went on television and said that he was so integral to the product that uh, he would uh, body slam Vince if he ever tried to leave. Yes, so there's no uh, there's no you know. Everyone was shocked to find out that gambling was going on at this institution. Yes. Um, another Vince tidbit that came out uh, over the last week since we last recorded. Um, the NDAs that uh, Vince had various people sign mm. may not be enforceable because he drafted them and uh, signed them uh, without the company's knowledge, according to a source. Uh, and this a lot, guy, Tim Marchman, is uh, doing a lot of reporting about this. I think he's with Vice News now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's worth following right now to to keep an eye on everything that's going on. But um, Vince was... Uh, I, I, I don't understand. Like, beyond everything, all of the horrible crimes that he's uh, accused of 
uh, I just don't understand how Vince thought he could get away with any of this stuff, including like you're a publicly traded company and you're signing NDAs uh, and not telling the company that you're the chairman of that uh, you're you're signing NDAs. I, I, I it's all so bizarre to me. How did he think? It's very like 1960s uh, corporate man um, activity. Yeah. Uh in the 2020s. I just I don't get it. Yeah, it's it's that world mixed with the Carney Pro Wrestling promoter that he still is <laughs> that he always was, right? Like it's Yeah. So I just 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 you throw money at it, it goes away. We forge a document here, we drop a suitcase full of cash off at a police station here, <sighs> and it all goes away. You know? Like that's how we that's how a lot of this allegedly operated, and yeah, it seems like that was the the mindset for him. And uh, yeah, he he and and Johnny Ace's attorneys seemingly being at odds seems like a bad a bad sign for Vince's uh, Vince's uh, overall prospects. I, like, who knows what'll happen in the civil case? But again, as we said, there's also a what appears to be a federal grand jury investigation into him. So. Um, yeah, looks like the uh, the and that and that's probably the best thing. A lot of people pointed this out, uh, but it's like the good news is no matter what WWE may try to put into the news cycle to distract, um, that the the feds I don't think care who is or isn't main eventing WrestleMania. So that is true. Uh, yeah, Johnny Ace is uh, trying to turn himself state's evidence here. Mm-hmm. by saying he having his lawyer go public and say that WWE knew that Ashley Massaro um, alleged that she was raped on a USO tour. Mm-hmm. And WWE denied that when that story came out after she passed away. Mm-hmm. And Laurenitis says, nope, they knew. And... In the article that I'm reading about this, there's no specific mention of like uh, of Lauren Ida's being at, at the meeting uh, where where this uh, the uh, McMahon allegedly pressured uh, uh, Ashley Massaro to uh, keep this quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no indication in the article that I'm reading that Lauren Ida's, um was part of the or, or Lauren is not claiming that he was part of the cover up, but he is claiming that um that the company did know and that uh yeah so all that's terrible. All that is absolutely terrible. Yeah and you <laughs> it just again who knows what will or won't come out who did or didn't sign NDAs and whether those NDAs are gonna hold up. But yeah it feels like there's probably more stories like that out there so it's it's rough and i don't think anybody and i think i know that the vice reporter did also mention like whatever you think of john laurinaitis everything in that article is also being corroborated by a doctor who no longer works for wwe so there is a second source on all of these claims beyond just john laurinaitis's lawyer so Specifically, uh, as it relates to Ashley Massaro, as correct, right? Yeah. Um, so you know this this stuff isn't going away, and more details are likely to come out. Again, who knows how far a the civil trial will go? But uh, yeah, more stuff's going to come out, and hopefully, uh, again, it was very clear going back to that press conference. The whole idea that the company wants is. The bad apple is gone and everything is perfect and sunshine now. And I think we all know that's not the case. So we'll see. We'll see yep. if there's enough heat to make anyone else uh, hit the road as we go forward. Yep. Um. Let's see. Just very quickly wrapping up the movie stuff. Uh, NXT had a pay-per-view this past weekend. Uh, it was fine. They finally pulled the trigger on Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams, Ilya Dragunov. Uh, I saw somebody tweet that he looks like he's gone through an entire G1 uh, every time he wrestles a match. And uh, that's accurate. 
He's mm-hmm. a small guy. He uh, sweats a lot. He bleeds a lot. <laughs> and uh, in the first 60 seconds of his match with Trick Williams, they were both bleeding from the mouth. <laughs> uh, a little stiff ski. But uh, yeah, so Carmelo and Trick have uh, pulled the trigger on one another. And uh, Car- Carmelo has gone back heel. Trick is uh, the biggest baby face they have right now. He's not the champion, though. Ily is the champion. And uh, Lyra Valkyria and Roxanne Perez and ended up in a their singles match got turned into a three way with Lola Vice and Lola Vice cashed in her uh, NXT uh, breakout contract and lost. So she's a geek. <laughs> she's a geek. Lyra's still a champion. Lyra's good. Um, a lot of people liked Lyra and what Roxanne did. Uh, they got lost a lot in that match they were trying to do complex chain wrestling uh sequences and at one point they got so lost roxanne just grabbed a headlock and it was like we are going to slow down and we're going to figure this out but uh it was a totally fine two and a half hour sunday night show mm-hmm. you don't yeah they <laughs> their four or five match shows don't get stretched into five-hour shows like say the royal rumble a couple of weeks ago well they don't have to do uh you know commercials for uh pizza hut and cinnamon toast crunch and uh turbo tax or whatever else so there's that <laughs> not yet <laughs> not you get, them, you get them on the cw you'll be doing like viagra ads i guess oh yikes all right, big news of the week, AEW, uh, big business is the uh, their special episode of Dynamite that is set for March 13th in Boston at the TD Garden, and they're doing the Mercedes money version of the first dance where they're telling you they're not telling you that Mercedes is going to be there, but the implication is that Mercedes is going to be there very, very heavily. And we'll have to see about Okada. Uh, But Mercedes is coming in for March 13th. Big business dynamite. Hell of a dynamite this week. (laughs) Hangman and and, uh, Swerve had another barn burner Mm -hmm. (laughs) in a time limit draw. Uh, on dynamite and uh, big business, big business is coming, and Sting and Darby won the tag titles. So, um, <sighs> pains me to say, hell of a dynamite this week, <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to Boston next month. So there we go. How about that? We're both we're both traveling out of state for AEW shows in the in the month of March. Who would have Who would have thought? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, I say if you take that uh, Takeshi Jericho match out of that dynamite, it's like in the running for maybe the three best dynamites ever. <laughs> like, I thought that was a really strong show for the most part and set everything up for the pay per view really well. And for that, obviously, the the uh, Boss Town show is after the pay per view. But uh, yeah, yes. everything, everything I thought was pretty logical. Everything made sense. They did different kind of angles. <laughs> It wasn't just everything was a run in after like when the Bucks ran in and beat up Sting and Sting's large adult sons at the end of the show uh, and bloodied up, uh, bloodied up Darby. Like there hadn't been eight other post-match beatdowns on the show. (laughs) So I thought that was pretty effective as well. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a good show. They're, they're building up for the, for the revolution show, which I am a, I'm going to. I booked booked my hotel and rental car this week, so there's no going back now. <laughs> um, <It> certainly isn't. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch Edge Edge and Christian wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that gets. Uh, yeah, that's clearly the, the direction there. And uh, Adam is going to talk on Collision this week, so uh, we're one week closer to you getting to see that match live. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> It's it's the you know it's the double edged sword. I yeah get to see the the tag match I've been begging AEW to make for three years. Get to see it live. Get to see the retirement match for an all time legend. But I gotta watch Adam Copeland. <laughs> That's that. This is my cross to bear. Yep. All right. <laughs> 
well that's uh that's all i want to talk about do you have anything else you'd like to talk about no uh like we said recording a little later it's an abbreviated show this week but uh obviously there was enough newsworthy things that we wanted to touch on so yeah good job everyone all right nice job until next time i'm ethan and i'm Leo. we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life bye bye Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Big business Liam R. That's what they call me. What they've always called me. <laughs> <laughs> And they really waited till Mongo was basically dead to put him in the Hall of Fame, huh? Sure did. That's kind of sad. Well, it could have been really sad and like he could have died uh, before today. I so at least, at least he got to uh, be alive for it. I don't know. I'm trying to put a positive spin on like the worst disease. Yeah slowly kills you from the inside while your brain is still alive yeah <laughs> really less less he gets to be in the nfl hall of fame which like all hall of fames is dumb <laughs> i'm just thinking about that they just announced uh, the hall of famers here on the nfl honor show and uh me a denver bronco fan for the first uh 16 years of my life mm-hmm 15 years of my life. They're putting a Broncos linebacker I've never heard of in the Hall of Fame this year. <laughs> also, also a kick returner. <laughs> oh, Devin, Devin, Hester. Devin Hester. And uh, Andre Johnson, a uh, good wide receiver who played on a lot of terrible Texans teams. Uh, I, guess, I guess there's always that guy. It's like, uh, I don't know, Joe Mauer getting into the Baseball Hall of Fame recently. Like yes, I guess so. Not a lot of team success to speak of, but I guess I guess if you're just a good player for a while, sometimes you get in. Yeah, they put it's Julie class. It, yeah, it's a it's weird and weak. like I think they they I think there's been a directive to put more people in, which is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but. uh Elias Peppers was a great pass rusher mm -hmm. and is like top 10 all time in sacks. And he got in and that seems uh, good to me. And Dwight Freeney was a really dominant pass rusher and won one Super Bowl with the Colts and they put him in. And that's like, I'd have to look at his numbers to decide if I think that's, but to me, it's like Dwight Freeney, Devin Hester. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Some Broncos guy I never heard of. <laughs> the Hall of Pretty Good. <laughs> yep, that's what it is now. You know, Andre Johnson. <laughs> never once while watching Andre Johnson did I think I'm watching a Hall of Famer. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like, just, yeah, good, solid guy. I feel like you would see him around the Pro Bowl, but more in the sense of, like, well, somebody from every team's got to go to the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah sure, he... I'm sure he had some thousand-yard seasons or whatever, but... Yeah, he probably led the league in catches a few times and had like 14, 1,500 yards. It's like, well, the Texans were losing every game. And uh, <laughs> so uh, Matt Schaub was throwing to Andre Johnson 10 times in the fourth quarter when they were down 28 points. Uh -huh. And the defense is playing, defense is playing soft zone coverage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are we doing here? All right, that's okay. Well, there we go. Yep. Did Lamar win MVP while we were recording? He did. Awesome. Congratulations on the money. Thank you. I'm going to go withdraw the money I won. Woo. Uh, let me see if it's in the uh, in the account here yet. There it is. I try to keep on keeping on.